Hello, welcome to Crip Point Awareness Channel. I am Sayyad, and if you don't know me, I am an information security, privacy, compliance, and risk management professional. I have been working in this area for well over 20 years in international global environment. I have been working with big multinational global enterprises. If you want to know more about me, please look at my LinkedIn profile. Here is my LinkedIn profile. Today I am going to talk about Talos, all about Talos and also something about EOS. But before we talk about Talos, please look at our standard disclaimer. And remember that this is an educational channel the whole purpose of this channel is to raise awareness and please also read the whole disclaimer. So let's now talk about Talos. I think by now most of the people in the blockchain arena they know very well about Talos and if you don't know please look at this website talosfoundation.io. This is your starting point about Talos. Here you can find all the basic information about Talos and probably you already know that Talos is a fork from EOS. The EOS ecosystem is designed in such a way that it is expected to have multiple forks and multiple main nets. So Talos is the first attempt to have such a fork. It will have its own blockchain. So Talos is going to provide an alternative to EOS but it will work together with us so they will be interoperable with each other the question is why we need telos why we were not satisfied with us actually there are some big drawbacks in us they are big pain points and they are huge let's talk about some of those pain points one of the pain point is all the mess around us ram there's a lot of us ram speculation and the RAM prices are going up and down with very high rates. So there is a lot of fluctuation. It is very hard for the developers, especially for the small developers who don't have much money to implement anything on top of EOS because in the beginning, no app developer is 100% sure about how their app is going to perform when it will be deployed in the live network in the production. and if the app is going to cost a lot of money, it is going to stop small developers to design, implement and deploy decentralized applications on top of EOS. In order to respond to this issue, Talos is going to manage RAM in a better way. Talos is going to control the RAM and it is going to ensure that the RAM prices don't fluctuate as much as in EOS and it should be very easy for the small developers to actually design implement and deploy apps on top of talus so it will be more attractive for small size medium size and big size development projects to design their apps on top of talus ecosystem and other thing talus is going to focus is on number of transactions per second so they are going to support up to 50,000 transactions from the beginning and also the transactions will be instant within 1.5 seconds it will be much faster than EOS and also one of the big issue where Talos is going to concentrate is the governance process the governance framework in EOS there are a lot of question marks in the governance process first of all in the EOS ecosystem there are a lot of big whales there are some whales who have over 20 million of tokens in just one of their account and they may have multiple accounts these whales they can do whatever they like in the US ecosystem. They can choose whatever block producers they want. Doesn't matter how good or bad is that block producer. And now these block producers, they themselves are becoming whales. And they are having a lot of power. For example, in the arbitration process, in the US arbitration process, US block producers have a lot of power. They can make white things black and black things white whatever block producers are going to say everyone else has to accept and if some of the block producer itself is going to violate the constitution it will not be easy to do anything within the us governance framework because these block producers they are cooperating with each other 
cooperation is not a bad thing but they are cooperating also for the wrong things because they are vested in trusts they are helping each other to stay within top 21 block producers so there are a lot of governance issues in the us ecosystem and Talos is going to resolve those governance issues. First of all, Talos is going to allocate same number of tokens as you have in the US ecosystem. So it will be one to one ratio, but there is an upper limit of tokens and that's 40,000 of Talos tokens. So there will not be a single account that will hold more than 40,000 Talos tokens in the beginning. And then later on within the governance framework, Talos is going to remain decentralized throughout the lifetime and there are some more issues that Talos is going to resolve I suggest you to look into this website read all the details in this website but also go to the block and here you can find lot of interesting blocks especially there's one block here published on 19th of July please read this block line by line here you can uh, read about different kind of issues that Talos Foundation is working on these days and also you can find here uh, the response of Talos to some of the issues for example there was a question mark against Talos that in Talos they are going to reserve six million tokens for six whales and they have resolved the issue very beautifully now they have reserved those six million tokens in a pool and that pool will be used for the development of the Talos ecosystem and anyone who is going to support the Talos ecosystem and who and who is going to play a productive role in the Talos ecosystem he or she is going to get a share from that pool so if you are interested to join Talos and if you are interested to develop the Talos ecosystem then you are going to get your piece from this pool so now they have also resolved this issue and you can also read about how Talos is going to tackle with security. Talos has created several working groups. One of them is security and they're focusing on security, enterprise grade security from the beginning. If you want that the big enterprises, for example, like uh, Accenture or IBM or Apple or maybe HP, if they want to use Talos ecosystem, then what security questions they are going to ask regarding Talos? The first thing they are going to ask is that how Talos is going to manage their information security. And the Talos is looking into security from holistic point of view from the beginning. So this thing was lacking in the US ecosystem. In the US ecosystem, there was scattered ad hoc information about security. There was no well-planned security architecture and design that different block producer could use and deploy. So every block producer is thinking what they want to do and there's no centralized approach. And also I am close to 100% sure that in the US ecosystem, the top 21 block producers, they don't know well enough about security, especially the enterprise grade security. For example, do they have any idea about what is information security management system? What is information security management system best practice, which is based on ISO 27001? Talos is looking into these aspects from the start and these aspects are missing in the US ecosystem. And even if you look into the top 21 block producers in the US ecosystem today, you can find them here in the US Tracker website. So here you can see, for example, US Canada is on top. And then you have a website, a web portal developed by US Nation. This is the portal I am talking about. At this portal, you can check the validation status of each of the block producer, which is based on the minimum criteria that was set by the US community. Now, this criteria is not good enough at all. I am not saying this is the best criteria, this is not good at all, this is the minimum. But even these block producers, they are not following this minimum criteria. For example, if you look on Canada, to see Canada, the whole status is either red or their warnings. So these top 21 block producers, they are not getting these votes because they are good in security. They are getting these votes because they have links, they have influence, and the whales are supporting them. And these kind of block producers who are top 21, they should have deployed redundant systems. 
multiple producer nodes and multiple full nodes and disaster recovery procedures and also they should have deployed maintenance procedures so if they need to do some kind of maintenance work and if the block producer node or some no proxy node or something has to go down for a certain period they should have an alternative node supporting that but as you can see here there are many top 20 block producers they're not even following the standard set by these block producers themselves because this minimum standard was created originally by the same block producers who are among top 50 block producers but they themselves are not following this minimum standard now maybe soon they will follow that they will update that but the question is that why it has to be red look at here everything is red and maybe less than 10 block producers are green and by the way i should tell you that Sweden core net is also green, it's 100% green, you can look at here, everything is green, but they don't have many votes because there's no whale behind them, There is, uh, uh, they don't have any influence or something, so this is one of the big issue in the Talos ecosystem, even if their own validation criteria indicates that they are not good enough, they are still getting a lot of votes from the big whales. So these kind of things are going to be tackled by Talos ecosystem. In the Talos ecosystem, they are going to take security seriously from the beginning. And it is a very big statement, and I know what I am saying, but this is the fact and this is the reality that I see a lot of energy behind Talos. I see a lot of people behind Talos, and they are taking it very seriously. Maybe you never know. Talos from day one can be seen as a better alternative than EOS because it will be technically better than EOS. It will be better than EOS from security wise. And they are also looking into the privacy aspects. What EOS is doing from GDPR perspective, from privacy legislation perspective. So the point is that there are a lot of question marks in the US and it is very hard to play an active role in the US ecosystem. It is very hard to convince the top whales or the top block producers to do anything. Actually, the top block producers, they don't even bother to respond back. Since these things are very tricky in the US, so it is very hard in the US ecosystem to improve. Maybe as time passes, US mainnet they are going to improve themselves. Maybe people who are casting vote or the whales who are casting votes, they are going to look into these validation criteria and they're going to give some credit to the small block producers who are doing better than the big whales. And maybe things will change in the US in future and US will stay alive. But right now there are a lot of question marks and US has to improve a lot. Otherwise, I think Talos will have a lot of opportunity and a lot of low hanging fruits to actually beat EOS in all critical areas. And also Talos has learned a lot from EOS. So they are learning from the mistakes that have been done in the EOS. And I think EOS may not, they need to improve themselves. Everyone is welcome to join Talos Testnet. If you are interested to join Talos Testnet and I welcome to join Talos Testnet, then please uh, look at the Talos Foundation website you can become member of the Talos Telegram channel. In the Talos Telegram channel, you can find a lot of help. And if you want to join Talos ecosystem, you can start by joining Talos Telegram channel. And this is the Talos Testnet Telegram channel. You can join this channel and you can ask any question that you want. I know that if you ask any question to the top 21 block producers in the US ecosystem, you're not going to get a reply. I have done that and I'm not getting any reply and I think you are not going to get a reply. Maybe they are going to give reply to certain limited number of people. But in case of Talos, if you ask any questions, you will get instant reply and you can get a lot of help and support. So this is the Talos testnet monitor. If you want to deploy your own testnet node, it's very easy to do that. Uh, please, you can look at this testnet talosfoundation.io website and there's a uh, information section here in the beginning. And here you can find all the instructions. And if you don't understand any of these instructions, you can ask questions in the Telegram channel. You can get a lot of help. You can also ask questions to me in the YouTube channel 
you can ask questions to the Sweden Core Net YouTube channel. This is the YouTube uh, channel. This video is going to be published in this YouTube channel. And also, there is an US Sweden YouTube channel. So, this is the US Sweden YouTube channel supported by blog producer Sweden Cornet. This video is also going to be published here. And if you have any question, please ask. And in this YouTube channel, you can also find a lot of other links here. For example, a link to the Steemit channel, Twitter, and so on. So, if you need any kind of help regarding how to join TELUS Foundation, what kind of opportunities you have, if you want to develop some kind of decentralized application or if you are a small business and if you want to know anything about TELUS, please welcome. And also if you want to deploy your test node and if you want to be part of this test net, you are welcome. It's very easy to do that. And if you still find some issues, some problem, you have a telegram channel. And the source code can be found at this website in the GitHub. And there's a lot of development going on. If you will read the blogs as I showed you in the beginning in the Talos Foundation website, and you can read in the uh, in those blogs that there are a lot of activities uh, going on. Right now, the Talos testnet is in stage one. Last night, they moved from stage zero to stage 1.1. .1. In stage zero, there were about 53 block producers who joined Talos testnet and this move has started from today so not everyone has moved from stage 0 to stage 1.1 there's a lot more to discuss about Talos but I don't want to do this in one big video because then it will be difficult to follow so I will make more videos in the future before I would end my video today I would like to give a message to the US token holders please when you are going to cast your vote, please look at the block producer's progress, look at their website, look at US tracker, look at the US nation website regarding uh, uh, the validation of the different block producers, look at how they are performing. And there's one more thing, if you do not have much time to do this kind of investigation, to look into the block producers, to look into the security poster, then you can do at least one thing. You can set your proxy. There is a website called Aloha EOS. You can see this here. Here you can see a list of all the registered proxies. In the EOS ecosystem, it is expected from you, from the EOS token holders, that you cast your vote periodically and you should cast your vote after investigation and you should make sure that decentralization should work so you should not go behind big whales but if you do not have the time to do this kind of investigation then you can set your proxy and at this website you can see a list of all the registered proxies you can see here a registered proxy from the awareness channel from this channel if you want to register this channel as your proxy then you can do it here here you can find everything about uh, this proxy also sweden cornet has registered themselves as a proxy so you can choose them as a proxy then they are going to cast vote on your behalf and probably they are going to cast vote every week on your behalf of course sweden cornet is going to cast vote for themselves on your behalf but 29 other block producers as well and they are going to do this by investigation they know security they have the industry best professionals in security they can judge the block producers in a better way and if you want to trust them you can choose them as your proxy but you do not have to choose them as a proxy you can choose someone else as a proxy uh, and but the point is that you should actively participate in casting your votes and you should not cast your vote blindly you should spend some time you should investigate by the way if you do not know how to set your proxy then you can contact me or you can find my video i have already published a video about this topic you can also find videos from other people on this topic as well this is the website of sweden cornet block producer who is formerly known as eos sweden you can read about 
them here as I said to you they have a very good team please look at this team they are going to update their team members and also they are going to update uh, some other stuff in this website if you find any error in this website or if you find anything that you don't understand or if you have any question uh, please contact EOS Sweden please contact Sweden Connect Block Producer uh, or please contact me you can contact me via the YouTube channel so that is all I wanted to talk about today and please do not forget to join Telos ecosystem and also spread information about Telos everywhere it is a new kid in the whole ecosystem and people need to know about it so help them and us in raising awareness thank you to all of you and see you next time.